Welcome everyone to the Docketing Excellence webinar series, which is sponsored by Black Hills IP and the SLW Institute. Black Hills IP is an accurate, efficient, and cost-effective U.S.-based IP docketing and paralegal service provider. The SLW Institute is an educational wing created by the Schwegman firm, which aims to provide insightful and useful information to the IP docketing community. For this webinar series, we have pulled together docketing experts and managers from the Schwegman firm, Black Hills IP, and their respective clients and customers to help educate on key docketing challenges and issues and share best practices on how to overcome them. The Docketing Excellence webinar series is free. There are about two webinars per month for the next nine months. To see a complete list of webinar topics and to register for future webinars, go to the webinars tab of the Black Hills IP website, which is www.blackhillsip.com. The webinar that we are presenting today is the first in this series. Today's topic is the top three patent docketing vulnerabilities and unrecoverable dates. We have allowed time at the end of the program for questions. Questions may be submitted using the Q&A button on the control bar on your screen. You can submit a question at any time during the presentation. The question will be held in the queue until the end of the presentation, so don't feel like you have to wait to enter them. If you have questions, go ahead and enter them as we go, and they will be queued up, and we will go through them at the end of the program. The presenters today are myself and Jacolatsky Carrion. I am Ann McCracken, the president of Black Hills IP. I'm a patent attorney with 19 years experience in patent prosecution. I was a partner at the Schweigman firm for 10 years. I also was a full-time law professor and directed the patent prosecution program at Franklin Pierce Law Center, which is now the UNH School of Law. Zee, can you introduce yourself and then give an overview of our presentation today? Hello, everyone. Welcome. My name is Shakalaski Karian. I am the docketing manager at Schweigman, Lundberg, and Wissner. I've been at SLW for almost 12 years and part of the docketing department for six years. Very proud to be part of this team. Uh, hope you all enjoy our webinar. We will be talking in our presentation about unrecoverable docketing errors the process vulnerabilities, and preventive measures. Next, we will explain in detail each one of these. Here is what we see as the top three unrecoverable docketing errors. For US deadlines, the top unrecoverable docketing error is deadline to claim priority to US provisional applications. For foreign filing deadlines, the top unrecoverable docketing errors are Paris Convention deadlines, patent cooperation treaty deadlines. In addition, maintenance fee annuity deadlines are among the top of unrecoverable docketing errors. As I said, one of the top unrecoverable docketing error for U.S. is the deadlines to claim priority to U.S. provisional applications. We have 12 months to file a non-provisional application. We do have two extra months to file the non-provisional along with the petition to claim priority to the provisional application. So, as I'm sure everyone knows, you must file your non-provisional application within 12 months of the provisional that you plan to claim priority to. If you miss that deadline, you can still claim priority to the provisional if the delay was, in, was unintentional and as long as you do it within two months, meaning 14 months from the priority date. However, if you miss the 14-month date, there's nothing that you can do 
This is an unrecoverable date and the right to claim priority is lost. This is why the deadline to claim priority to a U.S. provisional application is one of our top three unrecoverable errors. Z will now discuss the foreign filing deadlines that are on our list of top unrecoverable errors. So the top unrecoverable docketing errors for foreign matters are Paris Convention deadlines and the PCT national phase deadlines. For the Paris Convention deadlines, we have six months from priority date for design patents and 12 months from priority date for uti utility patents. For the PCT national phase deadlines, it really depends on the country. Some are 30 months, like the U.S., others 31 months, like Europe, Australia, and Korea. In China, you have 32 months. And Canada, if you file a petition for extension of time and pay the fees, you have 42 months. The link on this slide provides the timeline for each country. So if you miss any of these foreign filing deadlines, it is very difficult and often impossible to revive an application and complete the foreign filing. Z, can you move to the next slide and then I will discuss the maintenance fee deadline? The third item on our list of unrecoverable deadlines is maintenance fees and annuity deadlines. There is a six month grace period in which you can still pay a maintenance fee in the US after the maintenance fee deadline. If the maintenance fee is not paid within the grace period, you can reinstate the patent within two years of it lapsing for non-payment. However, if more than two years have passed, it is extremely difficult and again, often impossible to make the required showing of unintentional delay in order to reinstate the patent. And I want to take a minute to caution our listeners about a situation that can be particularly vulnerable to missed maintenance fee payment deadlines. And that's what I consider a situation where you have shared responsibility for the patent. This often comes up when a law firm prosecuted a patent application, but after the patent grant, it is unclear if the law firm or the company or university is responsible for the maintenance fee payments. If one party assumes the other party is handling the payments and that party um, incorrectly then removes the maintenance fee from their docket because they didn't think they were responsible, they thought the other party was, then um, it may take years before anyone realizes that nobody made the maintenance fee payment and that you went past the deadline. And again, if you go past two years beyond um, the lapse of the patent, it becomes very difficult to reinstate that patent. And where I have seen this happen in situations is that scenario where both parties thought the other party was, was handling it and neither party realized for a period of several years that the payment wasn't made. And in that case, again, that's a very difficult situation to get reinstated. Likewise, missed foreign annuity payment deadlines may be difficult or impossible to revive or reinstate as well. So for these reasons, the deadline to pay foreign annuity and maintenance fee and U.S. maintenance fee payments is on our list of top unrecoverable docketing errors. Z, can you go to the next slide, please? We've now discussed our list of the top three unrecoverable docketing errors. Those were the deadline to claim priority to a U.S. provisional application, the Paris Convention or PCT foreign filing deadline, and the maintenance fee and annuity deadlines. So why are these docketing errors so problematic? Well, these deadlines are very unforgiving. That's why they're on our list of the top three. Typically, for example, a missed foreign filing deadline is not possible to recover, will result in irretrievably lost rights. 
these deadlines can also be tricky to docket in some circumstances. For example, when you're dealing with multiple sequential filings claiming U.S. priority to one another, it's often difficult to know what the deadline is and how to docket those deadlines. And finally, even if the deadlines are properly docketed, these deadlines can easily be inadvertently crossed off, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Z, can you talk about the processes in docketing departments that can be particularly vulnerable to these types of docketing errors? Yeah, uh, our next slide in regards to where and when do these errors frequently occur can be with the file opening process, when the file transfer intake takes process, and the docket cross off. And now we will discuss these with more details. Uh, common errors during routine file opening is priority date not transferred from a previous file and very minimal file history has been received or we do not have access to the country patent website to verify the information received. Priority date is transferred but error is made in entering date and this can be as simple as a human error. You add a different date, you enter a different year and that will enter different deadlines for you. And the other one could be multiple priority dates for single new file due to multiple provisional filings. Sometimes priority claims are not in order. Problems can occur if the docketer uses the first priority listed, but it, it is actually not the earliest priority date, and this can cause severe problems and incorrect deadlines to launch. The file opening process in the docking part department is just the process of creating a record for the patent or the application in your docketing system. Although this may seem like a simple data entry task and is oftentimes treated that way, the file opening process is a critical part of the docketing process. Even a simple error in the file opening process can sometimes cause an unrecoverable error. For example, many docketing systems calculate the foreign filing deadline from the date entered in a priority date field. As Z explained, priority date errors are common or may be common in the file opening process. If the priority date is entered incorrectly during the file opening process, the foreign filing deadline may be calculated wrong, and as a result, the foreign filing may be missed. So the file opening process can be very vulnerable to unrecoverable docketing errors. Dee, can you now talk about the file transfer process? Yeah, one of the common problems during this file transfer or the intake process is a uh, new unfiled application versus application filed by a previous counsel and later transferred to your firm. When it's an unfiled application, there are no issues leaving information out. The application is prepared and filed from step one. But when an application filed by a previous counsel and later on you're getting it, Information sometimes get lost in that transfer or omitted, like pri priority claim, which we've discussed, it can cause um, errors in the deadlines that are launching. Don't always receive accurate information could be another one. When a client reference number is only provided in a title, but sometimes that title is incomplete, so you don't you are not certain that the title that you have or in the information that has been provided to you is correct. Uh, another issue would be receiving multiple reports and these reports having a mismatch. Sometimes earlier reports received are missing applications and you don't find out until you are almost done and later receive another report more complete. So then there's that confusion going on, okay, which one's the correct report, and you just need to review them. Don't, you don't always receive file history 
from client or previous counsel, it becomes an issue when you don't have access to the country patent website because you don't know what information to rely on. One, I, I did forget to mention a docket report with due date is not always received. And this is very, very important when you're working with the transfer because you are working with mul multiple transfers and you need to know which one you need to give priority to. So if you receive a docket report, uh, you know which transfer in which matters you'll be giving priority to and you will not be missing any due dates or deadlines. Um, another thing is that we need to file revocations and powers of attorney as soon as possible, but we always encounter most of the times issues with these, the assignments. You need to have a clean chain of assignees so you are able to file the revocation and powers of attorney so we have access to that country patent website. In addition to the items that Z listed, another very common problem in the file transfer process is not enough staff to intake the files in a timely manner. Um, this is something that particularly happens in the context of having more than one client transferring into a law firm. The good news is you're getting new business. The bad news is your docketing staff is overwhelmed and you have multiple transfers coming in you need to be triaging all of those transfers at the same time to be identifying the short turnaround dates that need to be prioritized to get into the docketing system. And your staff is just overwhelmed and you don't have enough people to handle the transfers. And that often leads to missed deadlines in the docketing process and sometimes unrecoverable errors, which is really not what you want when you're starting out with a new client. Also, you know, some places that I've worked with have just very complicated processes for handling transfers of files into the, the organization, and that can increase the chance for errors as well. So, um, you know, like the file opening process that we talked about on the last slide, the file transfer process is also a very critical part of the docketing process for a docketing department. And as you can see from the list of potential problems that Z and I just discussed, a mistake in the file transfer process could also easily lead to an unrecoverable error. Next, and the third item on our list of um, process vulnerabilities is what I call docket cross-offs. Different people use different terms. You might call these cross-offs, you might call it de-docketing, completing items. Basically, I'm talking about the process of removing a deadline from the docket after that deadline has been satisfied. And in my opinion, the incorrect completion of a date on the docket is one of the most difficult docketing errors to detect. You know, if you have something that was added to the docket and it was just added incorrectly, maybe the date was wrong or it was put into the wrong matter on the docket, it's still on the docket and it will be found. Somebody will see it, somebody will find it, and hopefully it will get corrected in time. But with something that's been taken off the docket incorrectly, it's not likely to be found. It's certainly not easy to be found because it no longer exists. So there's not anything for someone to see to say that looks odd. So that cross us worry me uh, because they are, in my opinion, again, a very difficult error to find if you don't have good preventative measures in place to catch that type of an error. Uh, one example of how cross off errors can occur in the day-to-day -day docketing process is just unclear instructions. And I'm sure many of the docketers on the phone have, had, see, have seen examples of this where you have very unclear instructions from the attorney that you're working with regarding what is to be crossed off and oftentimes something that should not have been crossed off does get crossed off and these can happen easily in the day-to-day -day docketing process. Z, can you talk about cross-offs 
in the transfer process? So in the transfer process, we need to make sure that all reports received are reviewed. Some will match and others will have extra information. Most of the time, priority information will be missing. Another thing that will help you too is read all of the emails that you receive that are in regards to this transfer because sometimes there's some information in there that can help you with the transfer or extra information is, is included that was not provided in one of your reports. In my experience, I've learned to review carefully every report and email received in the transfer since most of the time there is a mismatch between reports received. Um, we should confirm information received is updated and accurate. And uh, how would you do this is by checking the country patent website, review the physical file or any kind of file history received to confirm the information you got is correct. Do not always rely 100% on the report received because of the mismatch or the omission of important information in that spreadsheet. And one of the last things would be always go with what the country patent website indicates. If it doesn't match, Bring it to the attention of your paralegal, of the attorney. Bring it to someone's attention so they have time to fix any error that could be in that spreadsheet and, and the country patent website. Just try to figure out what the issue is and then you'll find out which one is accurate. That's why I'm always saying go with the country patent website. For us, it would be PEAR here in the U.S. Okay, we've now discussed areas in the docketing process that can be particularly vulnerable to unrecoverable docketing errors. And those are the file opening process, the file transfer process, and the docket cross-off process. Now let's talk about some preventative measures. The first three things on the list, on the slide that you are looking at, deal with the process of transferring files between organizations. The first item on the list for file transfers and as a recommended preventative measure is it's critical to get full docket information from the previous council and immediately double check that the docket covers all of the transferred patent files. So in particular, Make sure you haven't just received maybe a three-month docket or a six-month docket. Ask for a full docket with all the deadlines from previous counsel when they're sending files, transferring files to you. The second one on the list is to immediately triage all files so that all files with near-term deadlines are added to the docket as soon as possible. So before you start adding matters to the docket that you're getting in, don't just start working through them in, um, you know, uh, matter number order. Triage them and organize them in order of upcoming due date. And then open the matters with the short turnaround deadlines first in the docketing system. And if you have a particularly large group of files and a limited set of staff to be doing this process, you might even consider opening and just a bare bones file and putting in just the due dates that are upcoming and then backfilling maybe other bibliographic data later that's less important so that you can get those dates into the docket system as quickly as possible. The third item is to double check all docketing for transferred files as this is when the time this is the time when mistakes can easily be made, and I can't emphasize enough the importance of some kind of double check or verification of your docket. The next one deals with cross-offs, and you know, as I mentioned, cross-off cross errors, I believe, are very difficult to discuss or to detect. So verify all cross-offs in unrecoverable deadlines to be sure that there's not a single point of failure that happens there. In particular, it's a very good idea to have a standard process in place that requires someone who removes an unrecoverable deadline from the docket 
to have someone else double check their work. And that double check could be a second eye review by a person, or it could be some kind of an automated double check. But there needs to be a double check to make sure that an unrecoverable deadline that was taken off the docket really was a deadline that was satisfied and should correctly be removed from the docket. Um, the next one on the list is for foreign filing deadlines. Verify that all priority dates used to calculate the foreign filing deadlines are correct. And as I mentioned, if your priority date is wrong, there's a very good chance that your docketing system is calculating the foreign filing deadline off that, and then um, your foreign filing deadline is wrong. Next, we recommend dual docketing all unrecoverable foreign filing deadlines. I know a, a firm that has two different docketing systems, uh, Foundation IP and CPI. Foundation IP is their primary docketing system for all of their docket, docket items, and CPI is used just for the unrecoverable deadlines. It's a great practice to have independent entry of the docket deadlines in the secondary system when you're dual docketing. So you're having it independently entered in an independent system with independent country law. So you're basically calculating those unrecoverable deadlines in two different systems separately and then comparing them for the foreign filing deadline. Finally, you can scrape priority dates from pair files. This is something we do at Black Hills IP and perform automated verification of the priority date. The priority dates are um, available in the pair information. If you have automation tools that you can use to pull that date information out of pair and then compare that to what's in your docketing system, that's another great way to verify that you have the correct priority date information, which is a very critical um, uh, date in your system, and if it's wrong, can lead to unrecoverable errors. So now we've discussed the top three unrecoverable docketing errors, and we've looked at the process um, vulnerabilities that can result or cause these types of errors, and we've talked about some preventative measures. We have time for questions, if there are any questions. And I'll take a moment here to see if anybody enters a question into the Q&A section. And while I'm doing that, uh, I would like to talk about the next webinar in our series. So the next webinar in the Docketing Excellence webinar series is on September 28th. The title of that program is IP Management System Data Integrity, How to Ruin the Reliability of Your IP Data. This webinar will discuss common data update process control mistakes and how these mistakes can damage the reliability of your corporate data. If you're interested in this webinar, please go to the Black Hills IP website to the Webinars tab to register for it. And we hope you'll join us for this and for other webinars in the Docketing Excellence webinar series. I see a question that's come in. Let me take a second here to read it. So the question is, on incoming transferred files, well, the questions keep rolling in. <laughs> okay, on incoming transferred files, how do you handle cases that have not published or are not available in the country patent offices and you receive no files, only a spreadsheet of information? That's a particularly difficult situation. Um, uh, Chris, who asked this question, is pointing out that sometimes on the transferred files, you don't have access to the information to be able to go and verify it. That's where one of the things I know Z had on her list, um, she talked about revocations and powers of attorney. On the US side, at least, it's particularly critical to get those uh, revocations and new powers of attorney in as fast as possible, so at least you can get pair access 
to the U.S. matters. Otherwise, unfortunately, you're um, dependent upon what previous counsel is providing you. And so maybe in that instance, uh, if you can get them to use templates or um, provide the, if, if maybe the outside law firm is not giving you what you want, maybe you can get the client to push on them to give you what you want, but you're going to have to get that information from previous counsel, unfortunately. Uh, I would like to say something too in that respect, yep. Anne. I would recommend for you to always have, like prepare a letter from your attorney to the client. And what is this going to let her do? So the attorney that you work with is going to edit a letter to the, to the client for them to ask the previous counsel for file histories. I've noticed that when there are communications between the attorneys and the client or the previous counsel, I'll get a faster response. And in this letter, you're going to ask for your docket report. You're going to ask for a spreadsheet with due dates, with serial numbers, with uh, as much information that they can provide. And um, sometimes we do receive this spreadsheet with all of the information that we've asked in that letter. But I'm just just get prepared before you get a transfer to not always receive a file history. So if you have this letter that the attorney is giving to the client, so the client gives it to the previous counsel, you'll get a little better result. And if you don't get the file history, try to make it easy for them. You don't need to provide file histories. How about you give me a flash drive? How about you give me your filing receipt? If you get the filing receipt, you'll be able to see priority information. Um, yes, it sucks when you don't get a file history and you don't have all of this information, but if you get, if you get prepared ahead of time with your transfers, most of the time you will obtain the information that you need. Just wanted to say something about my experience in regards to these transfers when you don't get file histories. And that's great, B. I know you've been through some very big and complex transfers, so that's great advice. Uh, another question from Rebecca. What about multiple priorities? You said the first date is not the deadline. I think this is in response to the, you were talking about um, putting the first priority date in and it not being the correct priority date when there were multiple priorities. And I believe what you were talking about is the situation where the priorities, uh, when there are multiple priorities, are not necessarily listed in order of the earliest priority to the most recent priority. And if you, if the docketing team makes the incorrect assumption that the first priority in the list is the earliest priority, and I've seen this error happen, and they put that priority date in the system, you get the long, wrong due date launching. So just make sure you're being careful and reading through and checking all the priorities that are there and identifying what the earliest priority date is so that you don't use the incorrect one. Is that what your point was earlier, Z? Yes, that is correct. Perfect. Um, another question here. Um, Rebecca asked, how do you scrape dates from PAIR? You know, I can only speak from my experience here at Black Hills IP. We do have a lot of automation tools and a software development team that is um, always working with us to improve our docketing processes. And we have a automated tool that will go out and pull bibliographic information from PAIR, um, not only for priority dates for the verification process that I mentioned, but actually we pull our daily correspondence files with a PAIR scrape as well. So that's something that we have as a tool that we offer to our customers, um, and I can only speak from my own experience on that one. Uh, let's see what else we have. Um, you stated in your presentation that complicated processes increase chances of error. How do we make our processes less complicated? There are so many changes that occur, docketers can't keep up sometimes. That's a great question as well, and um, overly complicated processes often do lead to errors. Um, 
how do we keep our processes uh, how do you simplify your processes? That's a great question. Oftentimes, things like having checklists in place, good documentation, um, just not having too many people involved in the process is another way to simplify the process. But I always start with the basics. Let's make sure we have a checklist in place. We know we've followed all the steps that we're supposed to be following and that every step has been completed. And oftentimes that process of creating that checklist will help you simplify your process because you have to sit down and think about it and think, think through it and write it out. Z, is there anything you want to add on that one? No, I think you, you said, said it correctly with those checklists and documentation that is perfect because you know step by step what needs to be done. When there's no documentation, you're just going with people's memories. And if somebody leaves, then you're like, well, I guess we have to start from scratch what this other per all the knowledge that this person left if there's documentation and checklists, you know exactly what your next step is going to be. So you nailed it, Anne, on that. Awesome, thanks. Okay, one more question. Are these deadlines being missed because of lack of knowledge of code and how they should launch? Or are these deadlines being missed for other big reasons? Well, certainly the codes and using the wrong code is a common reason for uh, deadlines being missed. I mean, I've seen docketing systems that have uh, in the neighborhood of 4,000 different codes. And you know, for your docketer and your docketing department to know which one of those codes is the code that they're supposed to use, if they don't have any documentation or good processes and manuals in place, it's very easy to pick the wrong code. And I've seen docketing systems with it's just even on something simple like an assignment, which doesn't trigger a deadline, but just as an example, eight or ten different codes for an assignment being filed. And then similarly, um, in many other more critical uh, areas, having confusing codes. So one would be on the codes having not knowing which is the right code to use or having confusion in too many codes. Another would be, um, yes, not understanding how the codes launch. That's another issue that can come up. And then um, other big reasons why the deadlines are being missed. Um, again, incorrect information going into the docketing system that uh, would be used by the code. So maybe you use the correct code, but the dates that the code is using to calculate and pull due dates from are incorrect as well. Um, Z, can you think of any other examples on this one? Well, it would be a distraction too. There's some people, it, it, like I had said in one of my uh, slides, it's human error too. A lot of people are thinking about 2016 because that's the year that they're in and, and the priority information should have been 2015 or Sometimes, uh, depending on the application that you're looking into, you are used to seeing month, day, and year, and then they will provide, whoever filed the application will provide day, month, and year. Uh, so then there would be a confusion with the month. Uh, so sometimes, it could, like I said, it could just be a little bit of a distraction or you just... Uh, not really paying attention to, to details. Sure, so um, errors in entering the date itself are also another big reason for missed deadlines, and that um, preventative measure there is some type of a verification process, whether it's a human being or automation, to review uh, the, the due dates that launch and what those dates were triggered off of. So hopefully that's a few examples. And as we move forward with this series, I know we will get into a lot more detail on particular deadlines and why they get missed and what happens and what some additional preventative measures are. So I want to thank everybody for joining our program today. And I hope you will join us in the next webinar um, on September 28th and others in this series. Thank you very much. Thank you all.